everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Secret Invasion, the first episode. It took a while for me to get to it, but I finally did over the weekend. And I have to say, Brian, uh, I found it. I had to watch it over a couple of days. Because one, as I was watching it, I was bored watching it. The performances, Brian, thus far aren't, they seemed phoned in. Like, you know, it's like, they're just saying their lines. Samuel L is being Samuel L. And it's just not, it, it isn't anything even the way it looks, Brian, the way it's shot, it just seems, I'm sorry to say, low budget. I agree. Um, I was disappointed. I was underwhelmed. You know, as always, I'm willing to, you know, I'll watch the whole show. I'm willing to see if they can rescue it. But I had the same impression that with one notable exception, the leads all seem kind of tired to me. It just did it look like they really, you know, they, they looked a lot there. closer to Michael Shannon in the flash than oh, wow. they did to what Samuel L. Jackson was when he was kind of parachuting into um, the MCU way back when, 15 years ago. And I was taken aback, quite honestly, to see that and feel that lack of energy on screen in the premiere. So it definitely does not bode well for the combination of this show which you have been very vocal about saying should have been a bigger deal and maybe even a movie but also you know that this is supposed to be the launch pad for the marvels and we have had our major concerns over that picture and this premiere only made me feel like we're headed on the slippery slope with regard to that as well yeah uh Thing, the thing about this also with Secret Invasion is that they're missing the the reveal, the revelations of certain of certain people being scrolls. It's not like if Rhodey turns out to be a scroll, which most likely most people are predicting he will be, and I think he will be, Brian. It won't be a surprise. It'll be interesting how they how he finally reveals himself, but will it be a surprise, Brian? Well, let's talk about some of the choices because I think when you know when I when I stepped back and after I watched it, and I watched it with the wife, and we both were kind of like, similar to you, like we watched it all the way through, but we weren't focused. You know, like I think about like when we watched Andor, or when even when we were watching, you know, like Loki, like you're 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 really honed in on like the craft of the show, the lines, like where we're going, and this show just I felt like I was drifting. I felt like you know, and so the first place it started for me was. What do you think about the characterization of Nick Fury here? I I didn't love it. I, I, I guess I, I thought this was going to be, and maybe I was foolish for thinking this, I thought this was going to be Nick Fury almost at the peak of his powers against desperate odds, needing to do something that only he could do. And instead I got broken down Nick Fury a step slow and everyone telling me he's a step slow and already I'm kind of like, well, did we miss the window for Nick Fury to be sort of true super spy? Did that already come and go? Because I felt I kind of was hoping that's what we were going to get back to. And it just it clearly is not going to be the tact that Samuel L. the show is taking. I guess because once they set that as the tone, to me, the genre of the show immediately started to suffer because at, what I saw playing out on the premiere was a spycraft show. This, that climactic scene is straight out of like a Bond or a Bourne movie, right? It's like mm -hmm. you got the good guys moving through the crowd trying to kind of, you know, catch up to bad guys who are trying to do something that they don't quite understand, but it's very sinister. But it felt, it felt like a hack job. It just, like, it, it just didn't have, like, it's funny because I, I just coincidentally, the, the Bourne trilogy was on. TV and I like sat down and I watched like several of them in the row and I'm like 
there's no comparison. And maybe there shouldn't be because those are films and this is a TV yeah. show, but there's no tension in these moments where like you're supposedly watching the spies dueling with the scrolls or all there it there's is no tension there's no tension in there it is brian there it is there's nothing there to keep me focused nothing there that's being said that i'm like oh snap you know what i'm saying let me go back there's nothing there that has me like i gotta watch this and it's unfortunate because Secret Invasion was one of the, the, the my favorite storylines growing up, reading that comic. And, and and now this is where you, this is where adaptation, you really got to look and take what's good. Don't just take the characters and the, I guess the, you know, their scrolls and stuff like that. There's, there was more to it. There were a lot of characters to it. There was a lot of revelations like, oh, snap, this dude, you know, there's none of that. Yeah. None of it. And that, that then fed into, in terms of mailed-in performances, I mean, they have Ben Mendelsohn, who's a really talented sort of character actor. And when I saw him, basically, when I realized that he wasn't going to be Talos in costume, I was like, if there was ever a more obvious example of a guy who took the money to come back and do a job, but then said, wait, 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 I'm only doing this if I don't have to sit in the chair and get made up, there it was, because he just... Mm didn't look like he wanted to be in the show. And he obviously has a major part to play because there's a family connection for him as there was in, in Captain Marvel. But it it just threw me off because it was like, okay, he's going to shapeshift a few times, but he's never actually going to look like his scroll form. He's just going to look like Ben Mendelsohn. And I'm like, that's mm. kind of lazy when you get right down to it. Lazy on the part of the actor and lazy on the part of the show for kind of saying like, that's okay. It just looks, it just looks basic, you know? It's just like a basic show. It doesn't look, it doesn't have, again, like you said, that tension. Secret Invasion should have been the next Avengers film. The culmination of the Secret Invasion storyline. They missed that opportunity now. They've completely missed it. By the way, that was also a way to get some of the OGs back involved. Certainly. Because you could have made a, you could have flipped a few of them, and I guarantee the actors would have been like, "Where do I sign so I can play that version of my character?" They've missed out on the opportunity. Everybody's bailing out. People are being killed off soon. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. Supposedly, yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. But I think the other thing with this show too is it, the way the premiere set the tone. I now am on the lookout for. They are clearly going to use the shape shifting device as kind of like a, almost like a cheat code, I think, Certainly. in some of these episodes to kind of give you these aha flips of like, oh, that's not really who you thought it was. But I just don't trust it's going to be handled that well. Like, it's going to be, the analogy is going to be almost like when, like, Mission Impossible movies have become awesome. But if you notice, they've de emphasized the use of the mask trick, right? Because yeah, it yeah. is kind of old and hokey. So they use it yeah. once or twice to basically just bring it back. But it used to be like in Mission Impossible 2. They were using that like all the, all time, the time, right? <laughs> and so like, I feel like this show is going to do that where it's like, you're going to have these big moments and then you're going to be like, aha, we got you. Here comes the the, tr the, the shape shift into something else. And I, I, I don't, I just, I don't think that's going to work or land with the impact that they, the showrunners wanted to. So I'm concerned about that now. Yeah. It's just sad. it saddens me that the opportunity for that tension that you you want to see in a show like this is no longer. Uh, it's not that whether the intent was there or not. I just feel like everyone has phoned it in, Brian, including Kevin himself. Yeah, because then like we get introduced to the villain and King Kingsley Benadire, and like you know it's early. This is the one I'm going to reserve judgment on, but I would say like he didn't to me at least he didn't come in with a bang. Like he didn't come in with like a a moment or an initial thing that made me terrified of him. Yes. Um, yes, he he commits a heinous act at the end of the episode, which I think is supposed to make us hate him, but it just didn't have the. I found myself being more. I found myself being more chuckling and texting you that like, damn, Kobe Smulders must have wanted out of this <laughs> this operation versus like the impact it was supposed to have on me, which yeah. is like, oh my God, the villain just killed, you know, spoiler yeah. alert, just yeah. in theory killed one of our sort of, you know, long time, long time characters. So, yeah. And if she turns out not to be 
or, or if she turns out to be a scroll, they that's where they messed up. Because if you kill if you kill them, they, I would assume that they will turn back to their regular form. Correct. That's what they've done up until now. So if she comes back, Brian, I ain't buying it I, yeah. unless they do some um, go flashback before they cover it. You know, uh, whatever. But let's see. Let's see. It's still early. Yes, you are right. It is still early. I'm reserving judgment, but thus far, what I've seen so far is nothing for what I expected it to be. Yeah, and I think as we go down the list of performances, um, you know, I, I warned you. I warned about the Amelia Clark jinx, man. She is she is a franchise. <laughs> when she shows up in a franchise outside of Game of Thrones, man, those things do not go well. Like so, this one so far not a good sign. But I didn't really find her compar- character all that compelling as well. So we find out she's playing Talos's daughter, or you know, and, and, but like, and maybe they'll unpack her motivations for changing sides and you know why she does what she does with a double cross. But like, it, it it just didn't it didn't resonate so far. And like their relationship, that scene didn't really kind of have like real emotional um, hook to me. So yeah. Not, not, a huge, it was, yeah, it, it was difficult to care, Brian. Yes, it was just difficult to care about any of it, but you yeah. watched it because you, you're, you're, you're invested and you want to see where this goes. But so far, I'm not enjoying the ride. The only character I thought legitimately seemed to be having fun was Olivia Coleman. I don't know what that character is going to mean, but like for the 30 seconds that she was on screen, she actually seemed to be enjoying herself that she was in the mm-hmm. world. She's literally the only mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so. We'll see. I mean, this is, but again, it's only six episodes, so it's like they don't have a lot of room to to get this to the finish line. And I mean, I guess you could say VFX wasn't an issue, but if VFX isn't an issue because the story and the stakes are are wrong, then it's not really an improvement. So I'm really, yeah, I'm really concerned after seeing this premiere. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Secret Invasion uh, episode one. Some have seen already episode two, those who had the privilege to see it and review it. And Brian, n- there hasn't been any, um, there's still been mixed reviews for, yep. for, 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 for see us at the second episode of uh, Secret Invasion. So, I mean, Thank God is only six episodes. Maybe that's what we're going to say. Yeah. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!